What's up, YouTube? This is Bugshot33, aka Boss and Chris, back with a brand new video. Um, I may sound a little bit different because I'm battling a cold. Um, I've been trying to do my best to just kind of lay low and, and not make many videos um, while I'm battling this. I've had it for about a week now, um, and it's just kind of I think it's working itself to its end. But um, you know, still kind of got a you know raspy throat and stuff like that. So. I'm gonna do my best to um, get through this video. Hopefully, I sound all right and um, you know, not too too bad. But let's get into the book. So, what we have here today is we got a um, back issue comic haul that I've um, kind of had growing for a little bit. Um, you know, holidays is a tough time um, as far as showing things off and trying to get everything um, together and everything like that. So, um, you know, just kind of had some. Um, I don't know, a little bit of downtime while I'm, you know, just kind of busy with everything else and also not feeling good, but, um, you know, so I'm just going to show you some um, back issues I picked up um, over the past, um, uh, basically, month um, that I haven't just had time to really show. So I'm going to start off with, and I think I've showed these ones before, I'm not 100% sure, you guys let me know. Um, I, I feel like I've shown um, these specific books I'm about to show first before, um, I just couldn't find the video where I had done it, so if I have showed them before, my bad. If I haven't, though, here we go. So, first off, we have Usagi Ojimbo issue number four. Pretty cool stuff. I like, like this cover. Um, then we come up with issue number five. So, um, I have issue number one. Um, and then I have one, I have six, and I have eight. Um, so I just kept adding on, um, just my local shop was having a sale, and they just had a bunch of stuff up there, so we got Usagi Jimbo number 7, um, really cool cover on this one, for number 9, where he's cutting the candle in half, pretty cool stuff, um, and then this one stood out a lot, I mean, obviously I was like, oh, I gotta get this one, um, being a fan of, of both, uh, Usagi -o and the Ninja Turtles, so this is issue number 10, um, you see Usagi Jimbo and Leonardo, on the cover, um, don't let it throw you, like, back in the day, I guess, um, you know, the Ninja Turtles, when they would have them in color, would have the red headbands, all four of them wore them, and then, I guess it wasn't until the cartoon, really, where they changed up the colors for them and everything like that, but, next up, you have issue number 11, I like this cover, because he's just fighting off everybody, and then, um, you know, Rhino's in the background, just kind of chilling out, um, issue number 13, this is a really cool cover, just because, you know, the dragon in the background and all that. Really cool stuff. Um, issue number 14. I like this one a lot, just because, you know, she's about to have that battle. And um, it's drawn really well. Um, you know, the um, both characters look a little less cartoony in these. I, I don't know if, um, I, mean, I haven't read these yet, so I'm not sure if these are, like, more serious um, issue in battles. Like, if you look at the difference between... Um, Issue number 11, right here, because, I mean, this is a guy right there, that's that's on issue number, um, or at least it looks just like him, looks just like this guy on issue number 14 here, so, pretty cool, um, and then, issue number th uh, 18, nice little close-up of Usagi, really cool, um, you know, Stan Sakai is a really awesome, um, he's a really, really awesome creator, really nice guy, so, um, you know, hopefully he comes back to Boston again, and I can get him to sign some of these, because looking forward to that, and again, in the sign my number one, um, so, um, just a couple of books right there, and then we get into, um, actually a couple, um, pretty cool Marvel books going forward, so, um, this one, I was able to pick up, um, off eBay, I got this uh, on a really good deal, um, and that is... Strange Tales number 178. This is the first appearance of Magus. So Magus is basically the dark side of Adam Warlock. He's this like cloud looking thing in the back over here. Um, really cool um, issue to have, especially with um, you know Infinity War and everything coming up. You know, good stuff to kind of get your Warlock fix if you can. Um, you know, I, I don't know how. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how, like, for me, you know, these issues weren't so bad to pick up, but, um, 
you know, I, I lucked out because they happen to be at my shop. Um, so we have issue number 179. Um, this is the first appearance of Pip the Troll. So one of Adam, Adam Warlock's friends there. And they get more into Magus and how there's a, basically a, a secret society that, um, you know, worships Magus. Um, kind of, you know, it's kind of a cool story just because I get, I get from what I get from it, um, Adam Warlock has no idea, um, you know, that Magus exists at this point. And um, he's kind of learning about that he has this dark entity that lives inside of him. Um, I think it comes also from basically the soul gem. Um, there's an origin issue, I think, which I think is uh, Adam Warlock number nine, um, or Warlock number nine. And um, I'll have to try to see if I can pick that up. Um, but also got issue number 181. Um, this is the cameo appearance of Gamora. Oh, sorry, not cameo. This is the, um, so, either, it depends on where you go. Um, it's either the second appearance of Gamora, or it's the, um, first full appearance of her. Um, I, I know that that kind of got convoluted with some, um, CGC stuff, because some people have been pushing to try to see if they can make issue number 180 just a cameo, and, um, 181 be the first full appearance of her. Um, so, we'll see what happens with that. I don't, I don't know where they're going to go with it, but either way, very early Gamora appearance. Um, and this one actually is in better condition than the one I picked up, um, my, my original copy, so I'm happy to have this one as well. Um, next up, we have uh, Thor, issue number 338. Uh, this is the, um, this is the variant, sorry, yeah, variant my foot. So this is the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Really cool issue to have. I love this cover. I feel like this cover is done really well. Um, this is a Walt Simon. <coughs> this is a Walt Simonson cover, so um, I feel like he did a really good job, kind of making this like more naturalistic. And it's funny because you see like um, Thor has more of a Superman style face in this one, whereas like you know got like the squintier eyes and all that type of stuff. Um, kind of like you know how how they draw him from time to time, you know back in the day. Um, kind of I guess you can call it like more of the George Reeve Superman. Um, from, you know, way back in the, in the first cartoon, not cartoon, but the first television show they used to do way, way back in the day. Um, but moving on, I have another issue for my G.I. Joe run. So this is issue number five. Um, you know, doing my best to kind of break this up into chunks. Um, so I think for next year what I'm going to do is try to focus on um, getting issues one through 50 cleared and then go 50 to 100. And then... Um, 100 to 150, but I'm going to try to, you know, just do it in chunks over time, um, because it's a lot to try to pick up all at once, so, um, you know, I'm happy to have, you know, issue number five as well, um, you know, I, I only think I need for the first, for the first, um, 50, I think it's only like maybe 18 or 19, so not too much to ask, but just kind of, you know, spacing it out over time, um, hopefully most of those ones I can pick up for like, you know, less than two, three bucks, but we'll see. Next, we have uh, Marvel Presents. This is number 84. Really cool cover on this one. It's a wraparound. Um, not quite sure um, of the story. I haven't read this, but this is, um, let's see, I don't really know who does the cover either. I don't think it's, I don't think this is like a Jim Lee. I'm not sure specifically who it is, but it's uh, pretty cool. Um, Oh, and this is part of the uh, the Weapon X storyline, so good stuff to have if you're into, you know, Wolverine origin stories and stuff like that. Um, then we have Marvel Team Up number, this is what, 80, I'm oh, sorry, 68, Spider-Man and the Man thing. Um, so this is, this is, you know, it's, it's funny with uh, Marvel Team Up because it's a book I never read growing up. I mean, I think the series ended pretty much when I was young, and um, I just, you know, passed it by. But I've been coming across a lot of these, and um, they're actually really fun reads. I would say, as far as, um, you know, a one-shot series, the only one that I enjoy a little bit more than this one is What If. But I love these stories, like, um, you know, little self-contained, small um, stories here and there. And uh, it's, it's fun to see how Spider-Man, you know, pretty much, they teamed, up everybody, teamed him up with everybody in the universe just about. And, um, you know, just to kind of see how they work together, how everything goes. So, definitely pretty cool. Um... Next up, we have a run of comics that I really haven't... I've never full-out read. Um, I've just seen bits and pieces, and I know 
um, you know, bits and pieces of his history. But we got um, some Moon Knight comics here. So we have issue number 14, um, issue number 16, and um, let's see. Also got issue number 17. Really nice cover on this one. I like how it's like, you know, just a simple black and white cover, but looks really cool. And this is a Joe Gisco. So Joe Gisco, for everybody that doesn't know, is the guy that used to do the Marvel Masterpiece covers. He was at this year's Boston Comic Con, so it's too bad I didn't get this before. Um, you know, he was already gone, but um, if he comes back, though, definitely going to have him, you know, sign that one up. Um, next up, we have issue number 18. I'm not quite sure who did this cover, but um, again, nice little wraparound cover, so... There's Moon Knight that on some guys in a marketplace, it looks like. And then, you know, more on the back there. Um, see, so on the back it says here, Moon Knight and Marlene set out to avenge the murder of a friend and find themselves battling a conspiracy of terror. So, pretty cool stuff there. Um, next, we have issue number 19. So, we're going to go fight Arsenal. And I like they have a little concept out of you know the character right there. That's pretty cool. Um, then we yeah issue number twenty. I like this cover too. Um, you know, Moon Knight kind of looks like he's gonna burn the city down. Pretty cool stuff. Sorry about the glare on some of these. Um, then you have issue number twenty one, and that rounds up this Moon Knight. Um, and this is a Bill Sienkiewicz cover, so really really cool stuff there. Um, Bill Sienkiewicz has some really cool. Um, covers. Um, this one's kind of eerie, and I think it's like uh, you can see Brother Voodoo um, in there as well. So definitely looking forward to getting into that story and seeing what that's all about. Um, next up, we have X Factor number twenty-five. So this continues on with that storyline of um, Archangel and everything like that. Um, so this would, I guess, be considered his second actual full appearance. Um, you know, he's still got the mask on. He's hanging out with the. Horseman of Apocalypse and everything. So, pretty cool stuff to have. Um, and then we actually get to go back a little bit to issue number 169. This is when he has, when he's get injured by the Morlocks in the tunnels. And um, this is what sets him off because basically, uh, excuse me one more time. <coughs> so, what happens is that his, um, his wings, he gets caught, captured, and his wings get clipped basically. And, um, after the fact, when they bring him back, and this is an X Factor number 15, they bring him back um, to the mansion and everything, and he's healing and all that. And basically, he gets in a jet, and it looks like he it explodes. It looks like he commits suicide. Um, but this is what leads to his depression that basically has him um, go over to Apocalypse, um, gain his wings back, and become evil. So this is the this is that starting point right here. So pretty cool book to have. Um, next up, we have issue number 153, um, of Uncanny X-Men. Um, this is kind of a crazy one, like, um, Kitty Pride um, basically just makes up a story of, like, um, it's kind of like a, I forget how they did it, whether it was, like, a wizard story or something like that, but, like, basically, she makes a story up, you know, this crazy fantasy story about all the X-Men and, and battling and stuff, and so basically they took her a little... Um, childhood idea and made it into the issue. Yeah. Um, I want to say that Claremont was still working on this. Um, for those who don't know, um, Chris Claremont uh, was the guy who created, um, you know, Shadowcat, aka Kitty Pride, you know, all the rest. Um, and so what happened was that she, I guess, was, um, you know, his little brainchild, and, and you know, he, he loved this character so much. Um, that uh you know he put her, he tried to involve her as much as possible so that's why she gets this issue on her own that's why she's the um you know basically the focal point of days of future past and um oddly enough and, and uh, funny enough um her herself like basically she herself being who she was and and um the character that she is and everything like that and how much Claremont wanted to put her to the forefront um kind of is what led to the rift between um Claremont and, and John Byrne because um, John Byrne, you know, would plot out issues and talk with, um, you know, Claremont about what he thought was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, he would, um, you know, draw out the issue and everything like that and then find out that the dialogue changed because 
you know, he wanted to, basically, Claremont wanted certain things to happen in a certain way. So after that, it happened a few different times. They, I guess, had a falling out, and um, Byrne basically just wanted to end it all after issue 143. So, um, you know, it, it is kind of, I, I guess it's a short little um, explanation of, you know, the John Byrne and um, Chris Claremont partnership, why it ended, and basically how Shadowcat's kind of the center of it in a way, but... Um, know, maybe it could be a little bit too much information. Either way, whatever. That's what happened, and that's what this book is about. <laughs> her, her telling a story and, and getting it put into the issue. Um, so next we have issue number 172, and this is, um, I haven't read through this one yet, um, but this is, uh, you know, has the wedding invitation of um, Mariko and, um, Mariko and, and Wolverine. Um, pretty cool stuff here, um, you know, I've seen this issue a billion times and I never bought it, so I'm happy to have this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, because I'm a big X-Men fan, I, I kind of collect them when I can. And I'm trying to collect the Burn run, so the Burn um, and Claremont era, and then just kind of filling in where I can, putting in some of the issues here and there. So, um, you know, I don't know, I guess it's one of those things where you kind of try to reclaim your childhood a little bit, um, you know, through the comics and stuff like that. So I'm just picking up everything I missed because... As a kid, I, I was, um, you know, I like I said, I got into, and anybody who knows, I got into comics um, when I was nine. So, um, at the time, the volume two of the X-Men was, was coming out. And so, the first comic given to me um, with the X-Men was uh, X-Men number two. So, for me, I thought that that was, you know, the, the beginning point, and that's where it was all this and that. And um, I had thought that really... You didn't want to collect the Uncanny because the fact is Uncanny was over and done with because, you know, all the good characters were on the the, um, the blue team in the X-Men book. And then on the Uncanny X-Men books, it was just kind of all, you know, just the, not the throwaways, but like, it, it was just kind of like the B team. It wasn't, you know, like you didn't have Wolverine, you didn't have um, Cyclops, um, you know, you didn't have... Um, <coughs> you didn't have, you know, Gambit and all the rest of them, so it was just like, oh, like these aren't the real, like <clears throat> these aren't the these aren't the big heavy hitters that you wanted to have in that team. But um, so I miss out on a lot of good books, basically, is, is what that breaks down to. So I'm trying to collect them now, and um, you know, doing a good job of it though. So I'm having some fun with that. Um, next up, we have kind of a this is uh, an issue that I, I, you know, I've never owned and I wanted to because I was like, you know what. Um, it, it's an important comic, at least in terms of, um, what it is and, and what it means to a lot of people. And, and, and definitely, um, you know, it, it has a lot of meaning for, I, I think, just about everybody. So that is, um, you know, this is the, the moment of silence on uh, September 11th issue. Um, th this, this was a tribute issue done by, um, Marvel after the tragedy of 9-11 and, um, <clears throat> you know, this has, you know, a lot of different people, um, you know, joined in and helped out with this one. Um, just because it, it was kind of a pooling of all the talent um, to try to give back and, and, and really just kind of honor the heroes that, that, you know, sacrificed on that day and helped to save lives and lost their own lives. And just, you know, everybody who tried to, you know, really just um, help, you know, during one of the biggest disasters that's ever happened in this country. Um, so... Definitely worth picking up. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm, I'm picking this up because I've, you know, never owned it, and I think that it's it's something that, you know, um, for me, I, I think it, I think it's a good deal because I remember, I, I mean, and, and not not to get too, um, you know, into it, but I remember that day vividly. Um, I was in college, and I remember just the whole feeling of, of what happened and how it happened, and just the shock of it all. Um, so it's just one of those things where. Remembering all that and just having this kind of, you know, outpouring of care and love for the people that kind of sacrificed, that went ahead, I shouldn't say kind of, the people that sacrificed and, and, and put their lives on the line is, is just something that I think is a great, um, you know, it's a great book to have. So definitely happy to have this one in my collection. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and end this off with um, just an issue that, you know, I think um, I, I was told about by um, Jean Paul Ace Peter. And um, that is Fantastic Four. This is number uh, 587, right? No, 558, sorry. Number 558. 
Um, this, so this is the first um, mention of Old Man Logan. Um, you know, pretty cool stuff with this. Um, you know, it's not his first appearance, but just kind of a really cool cameo, I guess, of sorts. But, um, <clears throat> Jesus, I, I, I gotta get going with this video. <coughs> I'm sorry for all the um, interruptions and all the um, just kind of raspiness in my voice. Um, I want to thank you all for watching. And, um, you know, just let you guys know that um, I will have some other videos coming up soon, hopefully, um, before the end of the year. Um, I'm still trying to work on getting my 2010, sorry, 2017 top 10 list uh, finished. So stay tuned for that because I should be having, I think, at least one uh, more left to go uh, coming in. Um, actually, yeah, I have one more left coming in. And then I have another one that I'm, I have two more that I'm trying to chase. Uh, one I know for sure I, I'll be able to pick up, and then um, <clears throat> one that I'm actually chasing. So these are the three I still have left, and um, you know, so one of them's coming in, the other one I'm still looking for, and one um, you know will be on its way probably, um, you know, more close to you know the beginning of the year, uh, if not you know after Christmas we'll see. But anyway, I want to thank you guys all for watching. I want to thank you all for putting up with um, you know the condition of my voice and everything else. Sorry about that. Um, but again, this has been Buckshot33, aka Boston Chris. I'm out. Everybody have a great night. Um, have a great weekend. And uh, just, if I don't make a video before Christmas time, have a great holiday. Thank you all. Good night.